Talk. Donnie Schenkel is back in the uh, studio. Donnie, how you doing? Doing all right. We just got on again, huh? Yeah, a little delayed there. We forgot to call into the Skype uh, about five seconds before the show started, but we are on like Donkey Kong. Thanks for the coffee, by the way. Yes, we have two Trent Ice coffees. John bought me a coffee. Two Miss Brown Eyes. Because John knows, like I know, that if you're going to be a real weightlifter, you got to drink coffee. You got to put it in your veins and soak it down into the heart. You're not drinking coffee before training. You're not really a weightlifter. No, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if you're not drinking coffee, what are you? A non coffee drinking weightlifter? <laughs> Just, you, know. you caught me. You got me there with my pants down, buddy. You caught me. Well, I love coffee. I love Miss Brown Eyes. She's staring right at me. She's. Oh, look at that dark dress she's wearing. Who's Miss Brown Eyes? Coffee. Her. Oh, I thought you were look. talking about your wife. Starbucks lady. This town needs an answer. <laughs> Here we go again, baby. Donnie Shangle's back. The legendary five-time national champion, three-time world team member, 18-time Pan Am team member, Olympic Eyes. hopeful. Donnie Shangle is the number two weightlifter in the country. We, uh, He should be in London right now, even as a number two guy. When's the last time we didn't take two males to the Olympics, Donnie? Uh, coach told me that we as a country have always taken at least two males since the modern games of 1896. Yeah. Aside from the one we boycotted. Yeah. And now is the only time we took in one. So, bad luck. I don't believe in luck. Well, I'm going to say it, though. That is kind of bad luck. You should be in London right now and not talking to my ass. I don't believe in good luck. I believe in good discipline. Okay. A uh, sergeant major told me that back in the Marine Corps. He got in front of the platoon. He said, Marines, there's no such thing as good luck. There's only good discipline. Hmm. You know what I mean? See, that's why I wish I would have joined the Marines. I feel like I could have learned so much. You would have kicked ass. You think so? Dude, you're moto. Yeah. And you could look like you can kill a man. You know what I mean? I could. I got a lot of... I got a lot of... Uh, I see you in the gym. I got a lot of father You're anger. Not afraid to kill a man. A lot I told, of family I anger. I told Tom yesterday at yeah. the end of training as I was walking to my truck. He, what did he, you say? He, he told me, nice training today. I looked at him and I said, I hope you die. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, Jess was there. I said, I looked at him. I said, I hope you die. Why, now, why would you say that? And then he's like, whoa. Yeah. And Holy then, moly. And then, said, and then I said, as I started my engine, I said, and I won't miss you in the morning. Oh, my God. He's a fat ass. He'll be dead anyway. Oh, my God. Oh, my. We're cutting advertisement. Welcome to Walmart. Come on in for a milk special at $2 a pack, and we will get you in and back to weightlifting time. I like fans. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and we do sell fans at Walmart, and come on in. You know, I know. You know the ones you plug in, and they blow on you at night? I yeah. love fans. Oh, well, we sleep with a fan on every night. I have to have a fan. Yeah, this sleep. is actually a great thing. You know what they say it is? It's the noise. They say the humming noise. Mm. God. I don't want to sound kind of... <laughs> Say it's reminiscent of the womb. I hope you die, a child. I hope you, know, you die. Yeah. You'll be dead. I oh wait, I is, that, is that really true though? The womb. That's what I hear. You know, babies floating around in the womb. They hear the humming noise. That's why they say when a baby's crying, you got to drive him around the block or turn the vacuum on because it puts him to sleep, puts him at ease. Mm-hmm. The fan for me at night. Yeah. When I when I when I when I'm having difficulty going to sleep, I put the fan on. I lay next to it, and it knocks me out. And then I get back really? to my chair every night. Because you know I can't sleep in a bed anymore. Wait, <laughs> I think the I have viewers... a lazy boy now. I have a lazy boy. I think boy. the viewers want to know that, would like to know. I this. lay in my lazy boy and I hug a fan. <laughs> Not like a fan, like hey, I'm a fan of Donnie, but like a fan, like. But you sleep, you sleep every night in a chair. Donnie Shankle does not sleep in a bed like a normal human being. Ass people. down, feet up, head up. I have to. Puts me in that nice natural V, which is good on my back. I can't sleep in a bed anymore. My butt is too big. Okay, does the lazy boy kick out like you could kind of lay back? Or does you it sitting, kick sitting, out? Are you, have you seen my are, boy? Are you? See- <laughs> You've not seen the L boy. Was it impromptu? Yeah, you helped me move it into the truck. 
That must have been when too drunk on coffee. When we moved from California to South Carolina, you were the one that upstairs with me. Ah. It comes in pieces, by yeah. the way. It comes that in was, pieces. That it was breaks down. Gosh, it does break down. That was a hard move. You can move Moving it. sucks. You can move it better when it's broken down. And moving this when way. I become a millionaire, I'm going to hire movers. I am so tired. I'm Did never moving this? again. i got to pick up, and I'm big and strong. Yeah. So first thing, first person people go to when they need to move well, something and, is me. And you have a truck. I just got to pick up. <laughs> I just got to back. I got to buy You Biceps, Sometimes by the way. I want to sit down, man. Yeah. You know? I do. You're looking good lately. Let's ask, let's get, let's ask your whiff over there. Who's got better biceps, Jess? John or me? What do you think? What do you think? We're posing. Oh, gee. Johnny's are bigger. John's is more defined. Oh, John's is more defined. You told another man that he is bigger than me? You're more vascular. I am so depressed it's right now. It's not the size. It's the motion. No, it is. This has nothing to do with that, but you can't get to England in a rowboat. That's true. You really can't get to England. You can roll. It's you how you work it. It's not how you... You're not crossing the Atlantic. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you're not pulling into port. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Well, I do. I love sleeping with a fan. Uh, We sleep with a... We don't have a fan... Our fan doesn't make too much noise. We don't have a fan per se. It's above the bed. Like I was doing that per se. Right by the mirror. That's French. On the the ceiling. (laughs) (laughs) Kidding. I like to watch. No, well, my wife's looking at me funny. So did you see? Forgot she was here. Did you, did, did, we're gonna. Did you see the Dark Knight Rises? I did. Now I loved it. I thought the ending was badass. I didn't want to tell you too much. You saw it the other day. You saw it in Philadelphia with the director of. Uh, yeah, I was uh, out in Philadelphia and I got to see it with the director Adam Shiner for the Artist and the Olympic. Now, what did you think about it? I I'm still not recovered. <laughs> I don't yeah. have a I don't have a response yet. Really? Because I still haven't recovered. Well, well what, you know what do you what, what do you mean by you haven't recovered? Yes, the fire rises. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. <laughs> He's probably wondering why you would shoot a man before throwing him out of an airplane. You know what I mean? Bane you, was badass. Yeah. You know you can snatch. Yeah. Yeah. And he can clean a jerk. Yeah. I don't know what to say about yeah. the movie quite yet. I, a, I can't believe how good you imitated him. I know. I've never heard such... Blood a, will be shed. The whole scene where he's up on top of the tank car, yeah. and he's like talking to the citizens like, the city belongs back to you. You know, all that stuff. Man, yeah. I couldn't stop. Like, God damn it, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? You know, literally, I don't want to. I mean, then they're fighting in a Batman. Like, oh, come on, dude. I'm a grown man watching a comic book movie. And I'm like, you can't do that to the B-man. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. You know what he needed to do? What? He needed to lay in an L-boy for one night. You know, his back would have been better. Back. His back would have been better. That's what have. it was. Instead of, instead of hanging him on the rope. You don't need to go down. You need to sit in an L-boy. Yeah. That's all you need to do. Yeah. Anyway, the movie was badass. I recommend thoroughly that if you have not seen it, yeah. uh, quit being stupid and go see it. Now, you thought it was better than the first two? Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Here's the story with the trilogy. This first okay. one's got a great story. Yeah. I love it. Phil- That's the it. philosophy. Uh, second one... Great acting. Yeah. Uh, especially the Joker, on, yeah. Especially on the, on the Joker's part. Yeah. Third one just... Oh, my God! The third one just pushes you. He says, this is what I wanted to show you, and this is how I was going to finish with it. And yeah. he says, boom! You know what I mean? The stadium is crazy, and they're falling out, and the freaking, what is it, a bat copter, and it's, it's, it's just... Damn. Yeah. yeah. Well, you yeah. said it. Them all. You should have your own movie review on... No, they wouldn't let me do it. Why? They wouldn't let me uh, so you liked the ending. Oh, did I uh, like the ending? I, oh, I, no. I, I couldn't. You can't. We can't give it away, though. Oh, yeah. We're not no. going to give well, it away. Well, look. We're not, we'll, we'll stop talking about it. Let's yeah. go into the plot and tell yeah. people what we really think and, and the details. After yeah, after what, a year? Yeah, let's <laughs> we're going to be on the <laughs> we'll, we'll wait another few shows. Oh, so man. we'll stop. Anybody that's listening and that hasn't seen it, we'll stop talking about it. Wait till it comes on DVD. We won't we won't go into the details, even though I do want to talk about the end and some opinions. But ah, we'll we'll uh, we'll leave it be, my friend. We'll my name is Bane. Bane. My na- uh, Bane is my no. But you have made one uh, critical mistake yourself, Mister Wayne. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whoa. Let me try. And I can't you have made one critical mistake, my friend. You gotta think of like something in your gut and have okay. that off kilter British accent, and then just go a little bit crazy. You know what I mean? Oh my heart, so crazy! <laughs> well, 
haven't seen that in a long time. Get it out of here, you? Speak that, ready? Yeah. Um, and I will fucking kill everyone. Oh, wow. You kissed your mother with that mouth. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry. Mama Bea, I'm sorry. Johnny, he's none of the delicatessen. and he was watching the Batman Rises, and it just came off crazy. <laughs> Miss Miss Brown Eyes just winked at me. Look at her. Look at her in that black dress. Oh, I gotta suck it down. Hold suck on. it down, dude. Oh, get it. Get it in your soul and your love. <laughs> get it. Get it in your heart. Oh, hooga. Oh, the black hair, the black dress. She's sweaty. Look at look at the look at the sweat dripping down off her it's cup. Condensation. No, it's sweat. No, it's called condensation. It's love sweat. No, I believe it's called condensation. The only Science problem about this radio show is, is we only have two Trent Eyes coffee. you got a $1,000 plus computer on you, and you're holding on to a wet cup. What if it slips? Miss Brown Eyes wouldn't do that. We have a caller. Let's take it. Great show, by the way. <laughs> right, right before the show started, we said, I go, Donnie, what the hell are we going to talk about? I have no idea. And Donnie said, I don't know. Let's just go. Let's do it. Hey. All right, 914, welcome to Weightlifting Talk. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. What's going on, buddy? All right, what's up? Uh, hope all is well in North Carolina there. Um, big fan of uh, Donnie Shankel, big fan of John North, slamming bars, all that kind of stuff. Got a couple questions. Hey, thanks so much, buddy. What's on your mind? All right, first one, uh, talking about being a champion, okay? Um, you know, I, I was thinking last week you said you'd have a big panel there. Uh, this would be a good uh, question to ask the whole team, but what does a champion mean uh, to you guys? I know, you know, obviously, John, you're, you know, you're a national champion. Donnie, you're a multiple national champion. But what does a champion mean to you, not just in the sense of winning medals or winning championships, but in terms of being an athlete and a lifter? Son of a bitch, Donnie, you multiple champion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and answer this question by um, quoting a line. Thanks for the call, buddy. By quoting a line that I got from a show called yeah. Spartacus Blood and Sand. But he, that's a, this is a great question. I'm talking. Okay. Can I? Can this is cool? All mm-hmm. right. And one of the gladiators, he's he's up he's up and coming, and he looks at Spartacus. Or he looks at he looks at the, the current champion, and he says, "How do I become a champion?" <laughs> Part of my French here, but the the gladiator turns and he looks at him and says, "There's only one way you'll ever become the champion." Never fucking lose. Mm. That that sums it up all right there. You want to be the champion, you got to win. Mm-hmm. You can't lose. You have to be so disgusted with the thought of losing yeah. that you just run from it. Or you put your head down and you attack it head on. You can't lose. That's how you become a champion. That's what a champion means to me. It means never losing. Being at the top of that pole every time, no matter what it takes. Yeah. What do you think, John? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Winning, 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 winning. You know, Americans are four months out right now. The only thing I care about in life right now is taking gold at that meet and winning. You know. Um, yeah, here's I agree with you 100%. And my first answer would be your answer, even though you said it 20 times better than I would ever say it. So I'm just going to not even try to say it another way. So, yes, whatever you said, what you said, I agree with. If I had to choose a second answer to that great question, I would choose representing the USA baby. Bottom line, representing my country. Uh, it's very hard to go up in guys, uh, against guys that are in the Olympics in the world and the Pan Ams that I won't even go into details that are having a lot of help on the side and they're snatching what you're clean and jerking. But represent my country, putting my USA singlet on, making my punch, country proud, doing the best I can at those big international meets, um, putting on a show, having fun, getting the audience involved in it, and uh, coming home hopefully with a medal, of course. Um, or a higher and higher, higher placement every year at these international meets. Um, my goal next year is to medal at Pan Ams and to uh, to definitely try to medal at the World Championships. So, um, you know, I took fourth last year at the Pan Am Games in Guadalajara. And, yes, of course, like Donnie said, I did not win. Um, you know, I was, I was right there by bronze. But, you know, I put up good numbers. I had fun. I got the crowd involved. You know, I, I showed everyone USA on my singlet. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of shit for it and, and all the cameras and went a little crazy. And, and so, yeah, you know what? In my mind, that's being a champion. You know, that's being a champion. You're a showman. I'm a show, You know, I guess I'm a showman. I like the fact that you're a showman. Tommy Kono in his, books talk, in his book talked about how when you're out there competing before a crowd, you got to put on your show. Yeah. you got to do whatever it takes for you to lift that ball. I, I just... 
I get excited and I get pumped up. I get jacked up. It's a hundred percent true emotion, and I love this country so damn much that I just got to let it shine. Eccentricity. You look great. Out there. I, I got to let the electricity go berserk. You know, yeah. and uh, and it doesn't look fake. Either, and and you know, it doesn't look fake because it because it is it, it isn't fake. Yeah. And if I did that shit fake just for you know hype or whatever, you would see it. Yeah. You would see it you know right away. But I just feel that we are able to have. You know, everything that we're able to do right now with this weightlifting talk show, training, competing at meets, and everything like that is because of our military. Oh, yeah. You know, and guys like you that went out and were a Marine and, and protecting this country. And sometimes I feel bad. I've said this before about not joining and not representing my country uh, like you did. So I feel I owe it to the United States to make as many USA teams through weightlifting as possible to put in my two cents. We got the freedom to do whatever we want, and that's because of the boys that stand guard for us at night. So exactly, God bless the troops. God bless the troops, man. Thank you for. And you know, attitude the attitude nation certification seminar is um, hoping sometime in the very near future we we'll want to do in a seminar overseas for the troops. You know, absolutely free. We want to fly over there, and I know Donnie was talking to me about this too, joining and, and joining us to do it, kind of teaming up and going out there to the troops. Slamming some bars, drinking some coffee, and saluting the USA, obviously for free. You know, something we want to give back. Hoorah! Hoorah. So, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's a long answer, and yours was a lot better than mine. But, you know. I, yeah, what it means to be the champion is don't ever don't ever lose. Don't ever lose. Never lose. Don't don't even. Don't, don't ever lose don't and, consider it. And, and in any way possible, represent your country. Know the, know, the, know the amount of hard work it's going to take and to ensure that. Face it head on every day. Bust your ass in training. When you get on that stage, don't give a damn about what anybody else does. Know what you can do. And when you get into a dog fight with them, make sure you come out on top. There's only one person that matters at the end of the day, and that's the winner. Mm, I love that. I love that. You know, that's why I was in depression. For... Do you remember the silver medalists? No. In the Olympics, the world's. Do you remember the bronze medalists? Who do you remember? Well, sometimes. I the gold medalists. I mean, I like chicken. Do you remember the guy who won the gold? Yeah, that's true. We like them. Yeah. But who cares about Well, life? that's the thing is that, you know, taking bronze this year at Nationals was probably the hardest <coughs> thing that I had to deal with um, in my athletic career. I had a killer 2011 and a, and, uh, and, a, and a great 2010, you know, on top of the world. And taking bronze, especially getting beat on body weight and having it, you know, be such a tight fight, and you know, uh, I was surprised when I was bumped down to silver, and then you know, Ian Wilson came out and That's put me to bronze. You got, beat on body weight. got beat on body weight. I forgot that. And that was one of those. Uh, I was two months after nationals this year, maybe even three. I mean, my, my wife here could, uh, and a few people that are close to me could vouch for me on this. I mean, I was, I was seriously in depression. I mean, I really, truly, truly was. I, I, I didn't come to training. Um, you know, I don't want to go into all the details, but I was depressed, and, and not with just weightlifting, life, because life is weightlifting. Yeah. You know, I noticed that. You what know, do you mean all, life and, is weightlifting? I was depressed going to the grocery store. I was depressed talking to my mom. Right? I didn't want to go out and and socialize. I didn't want to go out to a movie or you know go out and grab a beer or play poker. I didn't want to do anything. Any, I just wanted to sit in my room. I locked the door and I thought about the missed jerk I had over and over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. You know, I didn't watch any weightlifting, didn't get on YouTube. You know, I couldn't even bear to watch myself lift or any other lifters. And it was hard. It was one of the hardest things I ever had to deal with. You know, I didn't get on the forms, of course, because I knew they were tearing me apart. Um, you know, but I came out of it. But that's just, but that just, uh, that just shows you how 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 bad I want to win and how bad you want to win and how that's how you have to be the champion is win every meet. If I'm not winning meets, I'm I'm depressed. My life is crumbling. Now I might you know there might be some people out there like oh come on John it's okay like you know you know there's a lot more to life than weightlifting there is is there I don't know what else is there for me. So when I'm not winning meets, I'm depressed, and it's hard. So, yes, uh, I kind of just am agreeing with you. you. Yeah, in my personal opinion, if I, I have to win gold yeah. in every meet I go to, and I will fight my ass off. 
to win that gold medal. The candle shines brightest in the dark. You know what I mean, John? And I've been. We, I think. I think. I think most athletes have been through that that depression, and they pull themselves out of it. Give you relating to me. You know, I worked four years to get back into the world team, and when I made it, you know, Turkey back in I think it was 2010. Uh, I had that bad hip injury. Remember that? Yeah. And they had to inject me four times with lidocaine. Lidocaine. How do you say that? Just lidocaine. Four times in the hip with lidocaine. Ugh. Just to go out there and and to pull a lift off. And I was so bummed at the end of that because I was in so much better shape than what my total came out to be at the end of Turkey. You know, you travel you you travel across the globe to go and compete for your country, and then when you you put a performance like that, it it breaks you up inside, you know. And uh, but you know what? I was in a depression for probably a month or two, you know, and lost a lot of weight. Thought about calling it. Thought about quitting. But fuck that. You yeah. know, I got back in the gym. I pulled that bar again and went back to went back to World Championships in twenty in twenty eleven. Had a great time in, in Paris, one of the really, really good shape, you know. So you're always gonna you're always gonna be down, you know, you're always gonna get beat up, you're always gonna think this is this is this is this just ain't working, you know. Why am I not doing yeah. better? But like I said in my, my blog post, keep going. Mm. You got to keep going, you know, because you never know what can happen. You know, it just takes it takes one one meet. Yeah, it takes one lift, you know, to get the white moment, you know. And another thing that I want to say here on air, because I think it's important and it, it helped me come out of my depression is I, I finally kind of uh, I, I opened the computer back up. And I walked back in the gym. I kind of got back into reality after a few months, and I was I was I was dreading it. Um, I was dreading the talk and the feedback and what people were thinking about me. And um, you know, I guess I was uh, I was just insecure, to be honest. I, I really was. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I I get online, and I'm and I'm talking to people face to face, and the support yeah. that was still out there for me. You know, I thought for sure I'd lose all my 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 fans and my support group and the people that that were rooting for me and 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 I'm like, oh well, they're, they're, there they all go. Well, my blog's done, my website's done. You know, I probably have zero friends on Facebook and no one wants to hang out with me anymore. And yeah. and there there everything goes. I work, you know, all for nothing. And and no, and then no one left. The dark orchestra was still there. The attitude nation was still. There, standing there. You know, let's keep training, John. Let's keep pushing. Next meet. Train, train, train. Meet, meet, meet. You know, fight back for gold. And I was shocked. I was really, really shocked. I couldn't believe the support that was still there. So uh, I want to thank everyone out there, you know, for for still being there for me and pushing me. Because I don't know, without the support, I don't even know if I'd still be here. That's how bad that depression was. That's fantastic. So I just want to thank the Attitude Nation for sure. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, they're, no, they're not gonna. They're not gonna quit on you. Seven Up, you know. Ever heard the story of Seven Up? No. The guy who started Seven Up, he wanted to call it One Up. You drink my pop, and you'll get One Up on your competition. He went bankrupt. He tried to push One Up, got bankrupt. So he said, "All right, I'll come back and I'll call it Two Up." Saved all his money. Invested in his in his in his, in his cold drink. Bam. Failed. Two up. Failed at three up. Really? Bankrupted at four up. Lost all his money on five up. Really? In the depression. In the dark. Broke. But you know what? He kept going until he got seven up. No way. Now he's a millionaire. Billionaire. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That is the best story I've ever heard and in my whole life. it's a good drink. You know what I mean? It really is. <laughs> it really is. I, 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 I drink... Seven Up or Sierra Mist or oh, I like Sierra uh, Mist. It's got the uh, nice little or Sprite. Sprite. It's all the same. Uh, Sprite's no good. That's uh, all the same. Sierra Mist has got a little bit of added something that makes it just. I like the nice. uh, oh clear. I'm a clear pop drinker. I don't know why. I don't really like Coke or um, I like Dr Pepper here and there. And Dr Pepper is good. Uh, I like Dr Pepper for sure. Looks like coffee. <clears throat> yeah, I like coffee better than them all. So, but anyway, yeah, what? I mean, you just That's a keep great going. story. You just gotta keep God. going. Dang it! That's a great story. What do they say in the, in the first? I'm gonna Batman? get that tattooed on me. What do they say in the first Batman when he's when he's in the bottom of the of the of the well and he, yeah. his dad comes down like 
you know, on the, on the rope, and it says, "Why do we fall?" Mm. So we can learn to pick ourselves up. Yeah, and yeah, that's great. Yeah, you know, get up, man, get up. Well, you're you're fantastic. You, know, you got to keep getting up. You know, you're I mean, you're, you're a fucking fantastic person. Everybody goes through well a point where they're they're going to be tested. Yeah, you know, uh, and it's those who get past that test who shine. Yeah, you know I mean. Well, and I think taking the bronzes here at Nationals is actually, you know, as Travis Cooper actually said, one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Uh, you know, because it's made me hungry again, and it's kind of, I got through it, and now I feel like I can get through other hard times in my life. Because I, 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 I moved up the rankings in the sport fast. Fast. I mean, I came out of nowhere. Like a hurricane. I really did. I, I came out of nowhere, moved up the rankings quick, 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 and started winning quick, 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 quick. You know, so I feel like uh, I mean, you know, pretty, uh, pretty Ollie, you know, cocky in your face, you know, for the for the last three years, and all of a sudden, boom, the bronze hit, bam, depression. So, but I got through it. I realized, hey, you know what? This happens. I got to push forward. You know, I was, I was, I felt like I let you down. You know what I mean? Um, and I felt like I let a lot of people down. But you know, it's kind of tough in my skin. It's kind of made me a little tougher. Maybe fight more and. And uh, and and fight a little harder in training, actually, to be yeah, honest. You know so, like Travis Cooper said, I think Travis Cooper was right. This could have, this could be the best thing for my career, to be honest. You need an L boy, and you need a fan. That's what you need. Let's take a call. Sorry, I was rambling on. Here we go. Six one zero. Let's click the button. And six one zero. Wait, let's talk. Ah, what's going on? Hey, John and Donnie. It's Adam. How you guys? Adam. Adam, who? Hello. Adam, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Can you guys hear me? Is this Adam Shiner? Oh, yes. What's going on, brother? John, let me just tell you, Donnie was doing the Bane voice throughout the entire shoot. <laughs> I really was, too, man. <laughs> and look- the funny thing was, I was doing the Batman voice probably through most of the shoot. Adam's got a really good Batman voice. Do it, Adam. Do, do it, it, Adam. Do it. Uh, hold on. Let me... Now I'm on the spot. Great. Um... <laughs> That's awesome. I love it, dude. It's uh yeah. I, I, I think years of smoking cigarettes has uh has made my Batman voice much better. <laughs> voice during the movie shoot because I had to be in the element. I had to get in that yeah. mood. You know, Adam wanted me to be a straight killer. You know. <laughs> He wanted me to be a secular. He was getting across to me these facial expressions that were like terrifying. I was, yeah. I was literally sh- what, scared. Good director. That's a good director. I'm phys- uh, a good director. For listeners out there, this is Adam, the director of Artist and Olympian. Olympian. Donnie flew to Philadelphia, and you guys shot the um, the ten minute. Adam had me lifting, snatching from eight in the morning to nine <laughs> at night. Adam, there is no. Hey, he uh. He he agreed to everything. I I, I had my spies around, because d- here's the thing: Don, Donnie Shankle is not going to tell you when he's beat up or tired. So I, I had to go to to my uh, secret agents and say, "Is he okay?" And they gave me the go ahead. Yeah. You got a million dollars for this, right? No, well, we're, they got I got in the figures, but <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is I, you know, what was I talking about? Mm-hmm. It's not so much that. I didn't agree to it. As in, we had a mission. We had a mission to get done. Yeah. When you see the mission. When you see the the end of the tunnel, man, you got to yeah. get there. Yeah. You can't yeah. crying about things. Yeah. You got to get out there, put your game face ah! on, strap up your ah! sandals, and kill people, man. Ah! <laughs> that was that studio. We had a mission. Yeah. He wanted me to look at that actress like I was just bait. Ah! So we saw the Dark Knight ah! Rises the night before. I got a little bit of intensity in me, and I showed it to him. Oh, my gosh. Adam, and, make this guy a celebrity. And he had me cry. I, yeah, I did have him cry. I want to hear about this, Adam. What? How? Tell me how, as a director, you can get in your um, actors' heads and really direct them to find emotions that they really never knew they could act upon. Like, how do you do that? Uh, it's... It, it you kind of uh, it, it's the dirty side of directing, which is uh, you have to be kind of an asshole, um, and you got to know someone well enough, or at least know people well enough, to kind of 
you know, because no one wants to go there. No one wants to do, to cry in on set, let alone in front of Glenn Pendley, um, especially when you're Donny Shankel. So the, the, the key is to kind of, you know, go up to them and say something that's really, you know, it's going to hurt them or piss them off a little bit, but uh, it's going to get them into that mode. Adam comes up to me when I'm in the chair. We're trying to pull the scene off, and he, I think I'm a pretty – I got I got a good ego, you know. I feel mm-hmm. like I've done some things. And Adam comes up to me and says, you're nothing. Mm-hmm. You're puke. Oh. You know, oh, what are you talking about, dude? Yeah. I want to be a winner. So I yeah. just I let the floodgates out, dude. He just did. I let him out. Yeah. Oh, it came off great, too. Oh, we got it. We had such a good time, Adam. I really wanted to thank, yeah. thank you again on the air. Uh, I went out to Philadelphia to shoot for the artist and the Olympian, a film by Adam Shiner. And we pulled it together, man. I'm really excited about the when you edit it all together and you put the score in the background with the finished products. And look, Kate looked great. She was great to work with. Um, mm-hmm. The whole crew, man. Um, the whole crew was just such nice people. You know, they're all people that when they got when they got a goal in mind, you see the work ethic in them, you see the direction, and we just go and finish it. You yeah. know, uh, Adam's brother Eric, he was great. Adrian, Adrian, uh, Army Ranger, we got along great. The cinematographer. You were he's telling a, me that he's a fantastic. Yeah. I did, did some time in Afghanistan. Um, everybody there that I worked with, though, was very, very helpful. Uh, I stayed in a great hotel. Mm. You know, uh, everything was just exactly what, what what I needed to make sure that I could go in there and lift big weights for 12, 13 hours and, wow. and make it look sharp. You know, yeah, make yeah, it look yeah. Sharp. Make it look nice. And then we got up the it, next Sunday, we did it all over again. Wow. You know? It, and it looked unbelievable. It was... Uh, I, I think people were pretty pretty shocked by it. And here's my like favorite part about the whole weekend was uh, yes, yeah, you know Monday and Tuesday I'm, I'm you know being responsible and cleaning up the location who, who graciously gave it to us for free. And uh, I, I get a text from one of our um, production assistants and just saying what a great time he had. But he also said, you know, I've never watched the Olympics before. I've never had any want to. The guy's kind of never been really in sports. Wasn't the kind of, you know, kid who was an athlete or anything like that. Just kind of made fun of. Uh, he's a bigger guy. And he he texted me. He's like, you know, I've never watched the Olympics. But I was just telling my girlfriend, it, when Donnie makes it in 2016, I'm going to watch the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Which was absolutely awesome to me. Which, which is kind of one of the goals of the project is, to really showcase the sport and uh, the personalities in the sport and get it to a wider audience. And really, uh, you know, it was pretty easy. All I had to do was put Donnie in front of people, and they saw who he was, and they loved him. Everybody loved him. It was great. Oh, yeah. He's a lovable guy. And he's, uh, being around Donnie with all that energy, even though it's quiet energy at times, mm-hmm. right, there's not a lot of, action scenes and things blowing up with the whole movie you're sitting there and you're just uh, you're this it's suspenseful and that's that's exactly the same feeling about being around Donnie is that he could be sitting in a chair sleeping and there's this energy coming off of him that's jacking up the whole room and motivating it so I don't know how he does it um but it, but it's it's awesome I he's, a big, he's a big teddy bear yeah, he is. that's uh, that, that I I shouldn't I know I shouldn't say that Mr. Shankle but uh cuz cuz you're quite intense uh, to meet, but once you get to know you, Donnie Shankle's a big teddy bear. As long as he's not have, doesn't have that single on. Once that single is on, it, 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 you can't go near him. Everybody thinks I'm an asshole. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Only in competition, though. You know, yeah, I'm training maybe, but um, but that's great, Adam. I uh, I really uh, you know, the fact that we got across the one guy who's interested in and in learning more about weightlifting, for me. You know, it doesn't matter how many, you know, if we get one that takes interest, it seems like to me the goal has been accomplished. But keep pulling this thing together. I'm very excited to see what the finished product looks like, brother. Uh, I'm I'm very excited to, to show it to you guys. I'm very excited to uh, see you again and go after bigger than 30 on stakes. I want, I want to have a 60 on stake with you. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but uh, it was a really great experience and. Uh, I just wanted to on air say thank you for the effort you put in because you gave me everything I could possibly needed and wanted for the shoot, and it's going to turn out unbelievable, and you were a huge part of that. So, But uh, I'm going to get going here, but I just want to say thank you guys. Love the show, and I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you, Adam. 
Well, I tell you what, he's a great guy, man. You know, yeah. I can't wait to meet him. I'm jealous that you guys are working together. And you never met him. Never met him. Hopefully, maybe I can work on a movie and be a famous actor like you. And and uh, you well, know, I've really set my game up on this. To see what the whole finished product's gonna look like. Yeah, I'm gonna, super excited. Here's how they're thing. taking the ten minute. They're taking us to the film. Well, this is how it works. Festivals. They take this, which we raised, you know, we raised some money for. Yeah. And what they do is, is they take these little short films. Mm. And don't quote me on this, but I believe they go to like a film festival. Yeah. Where there's a bunch of producers. I see. And they with money in their pockets. There's a, there's a little audience. There's producers in the audience, and they're looking for ideas for movies. Yeah. And they show the short films. Okay. You get a producer or two to grab it, get a million dollar budget, and then you got yourself boom, boom a movie. And then to get you on the show, I'm gonna to have to go through like five to ten minute short film, make it a feature. Four of your agents to talk to you. I mean, are you gonna be friends with me still? Like, are we gonna are you gonna forget who I am? Well, you know who they're trying to get the lead role. Who? Russell Crowe. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> no, I don't bitch. know. I don't know. But you know, that, that that's what I think the whole. Let me let me let me let me touch base on something you said before we take this caller at four oh five. You said something about how people think you're an asshole. Yeah. Right. And about ego. Yeah. Right. Ego is great, and I think people get this twisted. Um. And for all the people that you know are on the big, the big uh, I hate John Nor North tour bus, which there are many, um, even though there are uh, an army of supporters and fans, I call the Dark Orchestra and the Attitude Nation. There are quite a quite a lot that want to put my head on a fork, uh, pitchfork for some reason. And I guess the, what I the feedback I hear all the time is I'm uh, a lot of too much ego, egotistic, um, which you have to be in the sport of weightlifting. Do you agree? You have to be, you have to be that. I would imagine in any sport, you have to be selfish, and that's one of the things Donnie told me a while back. You know, remember this? You said you, you, at the end of the day, in this sport or any sport, you have to, or in life, you have to be selfish. You know why? And this, and I'm quoting Donnie here, not word by word, but I'm quoting Donnie. Um, if you are selfish, that's actually going to benefit. The next person, the person by you. We explain this, Donnie. You can explain this better than me, but I think it's one of the best points you had. If you only care about what you want, you know that doesn't mean you're a heartless son of a bitch. You know that means you're passionate about your own excellence. You're passionate about what my tattoo says on my back about becoming the best. Mm. And if you focus all of your attention and all of your heart and all of your soul into being the best and to being that champion, then it rubs off on everybody else. It does. If you keep chasing the gold, yeah, and everybody sees your example, they'll follow you. You know, they'll follow you. You'll be the shepherd. <laughs> oh, see, you you said that so much better than I ever could. And I live by that. I live by that. And I mean, if you're living every day to just try to please everybody else, then what the hell is that yeah. going to do? It's and like why, selfless love. I don't think I get jacked up. I, I slam bars. I love life. I love weightlifting, and I have to do it to lift big weights. So you know what? Screw everybody else. But the 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 what shirt I'm gonna come out with my next shirt for the Attitude Nation because um, we just signed with American Apparel, switched all their stuff over, real uh, real nice shirts. Is we're going out with a shirt right on the front, big big as we can get. It's gonna say ego, 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 and I'm gonna send it to everyone that doesn't like John North. What were we saying yesterday? See, about, I'm using my myself in third person. What were we saying yesterday about Ilya Allen? He's psychotic. He goes up to the bar. He's crazy and he's he's smiling. When Ilya Illin goes up to a 500 pound oh, yeah. bar, you want to talk about see, ego? Do you see any intimidation no. in his eyes? Do you see fear? Do you see doubt? Do you see do you see hesitation? He what smiles. Do you see? He smiles. Now that's insane. That's he's ego. He's got ego. And yep. when you, as a weightlifter, when you're making a split second Ugh. move, yep, with that amount of weight in your hands, which will either crumble you, or you'll you'll beat it. If you don't know in the back of your head that you are the baddest. Mother clucker, walk in the face of the earth. You will not win. Yeah. You will not lift it. And his competitors see it and they and they crumble in their boots. And I, I get I get a little foul mouthed out there in the training hall. I get a little dirty. I get a little obnoxious. But you know what? At the end of the day, I get what I need to do done. You know, I'm selfish at it. You're not going to beat me. Yeah. I know what I want, and I don't care about anything else. You know. And, and let me tell you something. In my opinion, that's why I think a Ilya has been winning the last few years. It is a world champion, Olympic champion, and B, that's why he's going to win this weekend. 
Aside from just being a fantastic weightlifter, the boy knows in the back of his head that he's the best. He is. And when it's time to show it, he'll put what he needs on the bar to win, yep. and he will go and lift it with a and smile that, on his face. And that makes him unbeatable. Makes him unbeatable. 405, I I, uh, I think this is a great point, Donnie. And I think it's, uh, before I take the call and push the button, uh, last my last point is I think the, the, the word ego is – is misunderstood. Mm-hmm. People take it the wrong way. It's got this rap of being bad. Mm-hmm. And that's all I want to say. One more thing. If yeah. you're going to get up and claim to the audience, claim to your team, claim to your coach that I am the best, mm. you got to first know how to say I. <laughs> oh, man. Where do you get this from? And to say I, you got to know what you are. <laughs> And have the ego to show it. I, yeah. I, John, Donnie I, Campbell, Donnie, you know. I am the best. You know, for the people out there listening, there's a reason why I dropped out of school, quit my job, uh, bought a U-Haul, and lived in a car for two months to train with Donnie Shankle because of this reason right now. I owe my career to Donnie Shankle, and, and this is exactly why. This is a small, small bit of why I surround myself with this man, why I train with this man, and I gave up my past life for this man is because of shit like this, excuse my language, that I hear every day on a daily basis, one-on-one, live. I'm the luckiest athlete in the world, and I want to thank you for it, Donnie, not to get all sentimental. All right. Here we go. 405, away lifting talk. What's on your mind, buddy? Uh, how you doing, gentlemen? This is uh, Got a two-part question for you. Yes. Uh, number one, uh, have you seen the series on HBO called Generation Kill? I have not, Donnie. No. Nope. Uh, all right. Um, as an Iraq uh, war veteran uh, a couple times, uh, I think it's the most accurate Iraq war uh, movie. Uh, it's actually a series of seven or ten of them uh, out there. And I think uh, last you know, we're talking about war movies, uh, and I think you all should see it. Well, we'll check it out. I want to say thank you for serving and protecting, man. Salute. Thank you, brother. Uh, my pleasure. Um, also, number two, uh, you've alluded to this a couple times, but uh, not really tackled it head on. But uh, as someone who's pretty new to weightlifting, why is the rest of the world so dominant uh, in weightlifting? Why does America not produce uh, like those 18-year-old kids, 20-year-olds who go out there and just put up amazing weights. Um, so, yeah, that's it. What's your name again before we cut you? Uh, Kevin. Kevin, thanks for serving, and thanks for the great questions. Uh, please call back later. We're going to answer your question, and Attitude Nation salute. All right, have a good Oh, we're going to go down this road, huh? Great question. And buckle your seatbelts, people, because this is a very common question. It could be a short answer or we could make it a long answer. Right off the bat, we as a country do produce fantastic weightlifters who are 18 years old and whatever age, you know. We do produce very, very good weightlifters, you know. So mm. let's clear that up right now. Mm. We're, 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 yeah. But why aren't we dominant with the rest of the world? John, do you want to leave me in this? Because I feel like if I go on this tangent... Mm. I want you to go. I I'm want gonna, you, This I'm is gonna, why we I'm have the show. Bite the microphone in half. Yeah. Well, this is why we have the show, Donnie. So... For the I viewers out there, I get ready. I can't, I can't do it. I Pass can't. me the coffee. Pass me the Trent. I need to sit before this. I want you to go on this. I'm going to make it an A, B, C, D thing and continue like on from Sessions? There. Like A session? No, <laughs> no, no. My points. Oh. My points. Oh, man. I'm going to first come out and just say it, okay, and cut right through the butter. I don't know if that's how the expression is used, but I'm going to cut right through the butter, and I'm just going to say steroids. Mm. Now, first I want to say... I'm a freaking hard-working Republican, so I'm not a person of excuses, okay? Don't talk recession with me. Don't talk excuses with me. I don't want to hear anything about I can't, I can't. Uh, I'm a self-made, independent, hard-working mother trucker. So I understand that we could work harder, we could do better, um, and, we, and we, can always, we can always do better, okay? So I'm not making excuses, but steroids. Uh, it's very hard to compete against guys that are popping pink pills left and right, um, that are connect that are um, that are uh, protected by their countries. Okay, we're the only country, in my opinion, that tries to pop ourselves. We have USADA people. USADA. USADA is at my house every day. Do you understand this? 
I walked into my apartment last week. They were watching Netflix. This is a true story. <laughs> this is a true story. I walked today. I got tested. Yesterday, I got tested. I get tested about four to five times a week. Okay. Do you think Russia has USADA? No. Russia does not get tested. Okay, there's the World Anti-Doping Agency. Do you think the World Anti-Doping Agency is going around testing cloak off and training? And I don't want to throw names out there, but give me a break, okay? Um, you know, A, half these guys are just getting tested at the Olympics, which you can cycle off, and B, they have stuff that's undetected. There is a ton of – and, and here's, here's the B. Here's part B. Ready? Money. Money. All economically driven, as Coach says. It's money, 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 money. And money ties in with my first answer, steroids. It's all the same. There is a ton of money in weightlifting in other countries. Okay? So they have scientists that make their own um, you know, steroids for them that are undetected. You see guys that are lifting on the world stage on, on whatever they're on. They're not cycling off. Okay? They're not snatching 215 kilos uh, on creatine, mm -hmm. okay? Um, buy-offs. A lot of money for buy-offs. What did I say to you a couple uh, when you first walked in the gym? Uh, one of my friends that I trained with, uh, one of my teammates, he said, he said, one man's sport is another man's business. And if you look at it like that, from an outside eye, you'll see that weightlifting in the United States is, is sport, which is as it should be. But to many other countries in the world, weightlifting is big business. Mm. And whoever is at the top, you know, it means something uh, money-wise. You know, One man's sport is another man's business. And once you can wrap your head around that and figure out what that means, then you'll begin to understand better why uh, the dominance lacks a little bit in this country. You know? Well, there's many, many stories of... Um you know the Bulgarians um and other countries when the when the when the world a doping agency is at the border trying to get in okay the weightlifting teams get notice from the border patrol and they run and hide in the woods yeah it's no secret they I mean, can't find them there's i i i, I can count thirty you know? i can count thirty stories I could tell thirty stories right now of running and hiding and and buy-offs and government protection and scientists in the gym and I mean and and it and it's fascinating to me yeah. how it's people turn a blind yeah. blind yeah. eye to this it's, like what's his name that just got popped yeah Don Hussein I don't, I don't I don't know his name the guy that was out in California uh, Tyson 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 Mike Tyson <laughs> Mike Tyson it was at a, the Alico Center I mean, or Podium yeah, Gold it's, it's no, people it's, are actually shocked that he got popped how that he was taking shots. Shocked? When people you, actually thought he was training hard, which he was, of course. But people actually thought that he was that good of an athlete to be snatching. What was he doing? Or in clean and jerk and the weight he was lifting. Let me let me let me let me get something across. Are you are you serious? Really are quick. people serious? Let me, let me get, are they that stupid? Let me get something across. When Jeez. you lift weights, something is going to happen to your body, and that is called you are going to get muscles. If you are seeing a guy lifting big weights and he has no muscles. What the hell do you think is lifting the bar? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, it, it, it's just it's mind blowing to me. It's right? mind blowing to me how people yeah. will look at. I mean, I guess it's not that mind blowing because they have no they have no experience behind it. Usually, anyone who tells you that no, 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 this guy's just working hard. Well, motherfucker, you haven't lifted a goddamn thing. Yeah. Um, one man ain't that much stronger than another tell, man. Tell, tell the Ivan story about what he said. Can I, can I tell that story? Am I allowed to tell that? Which one? Which one is on my... Am I allowed to tell a story about Ivan, though? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I should do whatever you want. All right, this is a story that, uh, you know, Ivan Avijayev used to be... Um, at, he used to be the head coach for California Strength way back in the day. Yeah, it was called American Weightlifting at the time. American Weightlifting. Uh, and it was Donnie Shankle, Martin Pashoff, uh, Dave Spitz even was on the team, Max Ada, uh, James Mosier. James Mosier, and uh, what's the big, big guy? Nikolai. Nikolai. Right, a few Bulgarians, right? Solid team. Uh, Dave Spitz hired Avijayev to be the weightlifting coach. Um, I've heard this story from Dave and a, and a few of the other Bulgarian guys, and um, they they tell it a lot better than I do. But it's just a it's a great story. And I haven't got to California, got to the American weightlifting, got to the gym, and said Dave Dave Spitz finally said Ivan, like what do you think? You know you got the, you're, you've been here for a day. What do you think? Ivan said, Your facility is good, good. 
Your athletes are good, good. Uh, the equipment, good. Where are my pink pills? Where where are my pills? I need my pills. And Dave said, oh, Ivan, I, I don't think you understand. Like, this is America. We're clean. We have USADA. Like, you know, uh, we're a clean country. We I have no pink pills for you. And there was a long pause, and Ivan looked right back at him and said, I do not understand. I need pills. And and Dave finally said again, Ivan, this is a clean country. Like there's no way in hell people try to get popped up and right. Um, let's just start training. And Ivan looked right at him, true story, and said, Then why? Then why do you do this? Why do you do this? Then why do you do this? That is the mindset in other countries. It's not even an option. People think, Oh, should I take steroids? Should I not take steroids? I wonder what my coach thinks. I wonder what he'll think if I presented him with it. Th- th- these these questions don't exist. It is a must. Open your eyes. If you want to see firsthand, the next time I make a world championships or John makes world championships, come to the world championships with us. Open your eyes and look around. It's no secret. And once you can admit that, just by looking at it, then you'll know what the deal is. Everybody knows what the deal is. You know, at least at least weightlifters know what the deal is. Well, that was I remember in 2010, uh, Pan Ams. We were in Guata, Guatemala, and the guy that took gold that beat you mm-hmm. was uh, in the testing room with you, mm-hmm. and the um, the drug committee, the World Doping Agency, dropped his P tube. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of I dropped I, the P tube I, on the ground, no test. Yeah. I, I I can I can I can tell you some some things you know. I mean, we could go on forever with the stories, but I remember I I remember I was next to you. I remember hearing yeah, it drop. Right, right. The, the guy said, "Oops, oops, oh no test," and the guy walked out with three. Well, he had five coaches surrounded with him. Yeah. Five coaches took the uh, the guy. I forgot what country, and they just walked out with a smile on their face. It was so obvious. It was disgraceful. Yeah. It was so obvious that they paid. Whoever did the drug testing to drop that P tube, you know, and it's hard. Like Donnie, you agree with me? It's hard. You work your ass off, you know. You don't think I think about the chances of competing with the best in the world every time I lace up my shoes and I go on that platform and lift. But my morals are different than everybody else's morals, you know. Um, and that's just the way it is. It's the way it's probably going to always be. One man's sport is another man's business. Well, it's hard because we work so hard. You can put 20 we... years into this and you can master yeah. it. You can put 20 years into this and you can refine your technique that lifts that bar the most efficiently. Mm. You can attack heavy weights every day and build that mental courage. You can put your body through hell and back and still come out on top as far as still having enough what it takes to snatch a clean jerk. But after 20 years, it doesn't matter. All it takes to beat you is one kid who's got two years in and who's willing to take that shit and go out there and win. Mm-hmm. And it's it's too bad that we're compared to these freaks in other countries and, you know. Everybody talks about technique and crap, man. You know what? That's great, and you'll get that as you continue to train. It yeah. comes with training. Strike. But if you are going to lift the most, you have got to be the strongest man. And the best weightlifter at the same time. Strength. I don't care how you pull that bar, how you hit that bar, how you catch that bar. If you are more powerful than the next man, you are going to pull it faster, hit it harder, and catch it tighter. Because you are that much stronger. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is give us some pink pills and let's go. I want to see how it is. Yeah, I want to go up against the best. I want you to go up against put put Kendrick Ferris on some pink pills. If you put the playing field level, America would be kicking some ass. Kendrick Ferris took eighth in 08. Eighth clean. What, is it, what, did, what did you say? You say it takes uh, you take that shit and it puts thirty kilos on each lift. Ferris is gold medal lifter in Olympics this year. You, if you put Kendrick Ferris on pink pills, put Holly and Pancold on some pills. Are you kidding me? You kidding me? Uh, the United States would be dominant in weightlifting, okay? Look, I understand the other debate is is that they have way more people to choose from. There's money in these other uh, countries. Uh, 
the the talent pool is way bigger in other countries. They start younger. Some countries don't even have a choice. They line them up and they pick. Okay, you're a weightlifter. You're a soccer player. You're a gymnast, and they put them in these like camps slash schools. That's garbage. But look, I can go on and on about that. But the main point is the steroid factor. I don't even want to touch base on other uh, on this other crap because I'm you know we do I'm have done. other kids to start young as well too. You know, but I'm done with it, John. Are we done? I'm done with it. I'm done with it, dude. Donnie's getting pissed. I'm done with it. When you work, when you when you train, how long have you been training? Eight years. Eleven now. Eleven years, and you constantly hear about this all the time. You know, Donnie, why aren't you lifting what this guy's lifting? Donnie, why aren't you winning gold? Why is the United States doing better? Are you fucking serious? You know, it, stop asking the question. It, uh, if you're that blind where you don't understand why we're not winning gold in the Olympics, then uh, I'm not. Try, I'm not making. I'm not mad at the caller, but don't even call and ask. Yeah. If you have it, to it, ask I, that question, then I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm done with it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. I mean, listen, if you disagree or you got you want to throw your two cents in, call in, but uh, I think we're done with this topic. It's getting heated. It's a touchy subject. You know, we train hard and um, you know, at the end of the day, it is unfair. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I don't want to sound like a liberal, but it is a little unfair. So, we got a caller. This should be an interesting call. Um hopefully it's not about the topic cuz I don't want Donnie punching me or the computer, but 630, let's click the button here. 630, you're on the heated discussion right now of weightlifting talk. Um, welcome to the show, buddy. Hi, guys. My name is Brandon. I don't want uh, you to get punched in the face, so I'm not going to ask about the steroid thing. Better not. Uh, do what you want, man. We're just kidding around. Ask away. What's on your mind? All right. Um, I'm in a kind of a pickle right now. I don't really have a coach, and uh, there's none really in the area that know too much about the sport. So I was wondering, uh, how would you guys approach training without a coach? Oh, that's a great question, Donnie. Initially, by just sitting down and watching, you know, I watched videos. Yeah. There was no weightlifting videos on really YouTube at the time, mm. except for like the legends, you know. But I, uh, I think I had some Iron Man videos, and I started with Mike Bergner, and he would play the videos in the background in his gym, and I would, you know, I would devote a good half an hour of just sitting in the chair yeah. and and watching. Mm. You know, it's kind of like one of those things. Best way to learn is just to keep your mouth shut and listen. Mm. Well, sometimes also the best way to learn is to sit down, open your eyes, and watch and pay attention. Um, but I've always tried to surround myself with a coach because I do believe that is important for a couple of reasons. But, you know, we got this one kid here, Chris, this new guy. He's been training on his own at 24, and he's got fantastic. Uh, 21. Uh, 24 Hour Fitness is oh, oh. <laughs> He's been training in his own at 24 Hour Fitness, and obviously he doesn't have the equipment and the uh, you know mm-hmm. the means to to lift heavy like 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 you and I do. But I tell you what, that boy looks sharp. He's got he's fearless. He hits that bar. No, he has a coach now though. He does have a coach yeah, now. I don't want to. Oh, but I, I get your point though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, many lifters you, like that. You, you watch. I mean, that, I mean, I'm, 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 John will go ahead and give you his 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 advice here. But I think if if you if you if you take the time to just to watch, to go in the gym and and try to mimic, uh, at least feel what's going on, you know you can get away with not having a coach for a little bit. But yeah, you're, there is there is a time where you're going to have to go in search of one and in search of a proper facility and uh, proper teammates to train with, have that competitive edge, and then you'll really start mm-hmm. to make progress. Yeah. What uh, What's your name again? Brandon. Brandon. What uh, Where do you train at right now? What facility? Uh, I train at a local CrossFit gym, but the coach there teaches low bar back squats. They have really cruddy bars, and, you know, that's just kind of what I'm stuck with. It, it fascinates me how some CrossFit gyms, look, if you're going to do gymnastics, wouldn't you get good gymnastics, um, um, you know, stuff? <laughs> but what is that? What, what, I'm, I'm spacing the word. Just gymnastic equipment. That's, that's the yeah, word. Equipment. Yeah, my, I mean, yeah, it mind boggles me how these gyms have bars that don't spin. And it, you know, it frustrates. I know I'm getting off topic right now, but it really does frustrate. Well, me. here, here's all. Here's the thing. If you are going to try to get better at something, and you know what you need that yeah. is going to get you better at it, don't ever, ever depend on anyone else yeah. to do it for you. 
Mm-hmm. Get your own bar. Save your money. Yeah, bring it Buy in. Buy a bar that properly spends because that's very God, important. Yeah, very. Important. You got to have the proper bar. The bar for a weightlifter is everything. You yeah. know, a good a good bar. Um, and you know, muscle driver here who coach Penley, they cre- they have yeah, a, a they really bar do. that is cheap and it is it's last you forever. For fantastic, last yeah. you forever. I mean, not to plug Penley, just do what you do. Whatever company, who cares? Just get a nice bar. Save your bar. Save your money. Go buy a bar. Go buy some. You don't have to buy a whole set of plates. Buy enough plates that you can load it. Yeah, that's one start there. Yeah, and don't do low bar. I mean, I mean, it can't, can't. Are you allowed? Do they have like open gym where you can go in and do your own thing, or do you like have to do low bar? Well, I definitely am not going to do low bar, but I go in whenever they don't have classes and kind of do my own thing by myself. That's great. Well, here's my advice to you, and um, I, I a I agree with Donnie. Videos and watching. Um, you know, on YouTube, YouTube is the is the best thing that's ever happened because it's basically just free coaching. You can just watch uh, the lifters lift, take notes, slow mo, pause, see where the bar is, see where their hips are, and and all that great stuff. You know, watch the Olympic champions. Also, um, find a seminar in your in, around your area. Try to bring a seminar in your gym. I mean, look, of course, the best seminar to go to is the Attitude Nation certification. Don't start your <laughs> no. but. Take mine away, but any seminar, you know. I mean, find a seminar, travel to it, um, find a uh, gym, fly to a gym for the weekend, yeah. like here or Average Bros or Greg Everett or or any gym in the country. Fly to a gym and visit for a weekend. Um, you know, uh, you know. Where are you at right now? About it, where, really. where do you live? I live in uh, Carroll Stream. It's outside of Chicago. Oh, I, I I have a buddy in Chicago. Uh, we Facebook friends. I can hook you up with a guy that could uh, not only can you train with, but can coach you. His name's Jimmy Duba. Are we Facebook? Right. Do I have a Facebook? Are we Facebook friends? Uh, I'm friends on the Attitude Nation thing. Okay, yeah. Well, well, email me or write me your um, your phone number, or and uh, I will get you a coach out in Chicago to hook you up. I know multiple people out there, but the best coach, in my opinion, is a guy named Jimmy Duba. Let me hook some. Let me pull some strings for you. All right, cool. Yeah, man. E- uh, email me J North at CaliforniaStrength dot com, or just go through the, uh, the the Attitude Nation thing and let me know Brandon that was on Weightlifting Talk, and I will hook you up, man. All right, sweet. Yeah, buddy. Okay, Videos and eyes open and uh, listening to Wait If You Talk. <laughs> All right, buddy. Look at that, man. One big family, you know? I, I just, uh, I had so many people help me out when I was starting out. You know, Ben Claridad, Hassle Free, um, all my other teammates, Kyle, that, uh, you know, I, sure, yeah, yeah. I try to spread the uh, spread the love too now, you know. You gotta so. go in search of people who know what they're talking about and yeah. Take from them, capitalize it, combine it together with other people who know what they're talking about. Um That was a good question. And then go put it together. This yeah. has been every question has been it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, even though the question before frustrated us and got us heated, it was still a good question. And it's something that really is on a lot of people's minds. I guess to us it's so simple and and, and we know that uh, we take that for granted, but you know, people do get confused, you know, uh, w- with that answer. But again, I, I do like to make the case that it is no excuse. Yeah. Even though we train very hard and we have freak athletes here in America, we could train harder. It's not like we're perfect. So I like to, I like to make that well known. Yeah. You know, I could train harder. Um, and, and so on and so on. So no excuses. I mean, I mean hard is one thing, but there comes a point. Where, well, it does. There comes a wall. There comes a point when you it have, does. It's not just about training hard. It's about being smart. Yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, you I could was, train. I was talking to Cheryl Hayworth at the end of Nationals in the airport, and you know, I'm coming to a you know a point in my career as a weightlifter where I, it's time to start learning some other things. And I asked Cheryl, what what's what was you know Cheryl Hayworth the Bronze medalist for the Sydney Olympics. Yeah. She looked at me and she said, Donnie, stay healthy. Mm. So there's another bit of advice. Stay healthy. When you go in the gym, when you're going after to compete, you got to stay healthy. You can't be doing things that are tearing you up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, the, it's the training and, you know, uh, is always evolving. Yeah. You know, to what you need to do to win. Because, it, you know, 
all that matters is the total improving. So whether you're going in the gym and you're pulling off 10 snatches, 10 clean and jerks a week, or you're going to the gym pulling off 100 snatches, 100 clean and jerks a week, whether you're lifting tonnages of yada 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 versus tonnages of so much more, well, what's giving you results? Mm-hmm. What's making you improve? You know? I mean, I mean, as long as you're improving, whatever program you're doing, whatever, whoever, you, wherever you're at, whatever your, whoever your coach is, as long as you're improving, that's the important thing. I, know, you, I can compare it to to any sport, you know. I mean, I mean, with quality, going in the gym and training quality, not just killing yourself in there. Any ape can do that, but going in there and training like professional quality, you know. Yeah, I guess and I'm smart and about. smart, and it's like the Bulgarians back in the you know seventies and eighties. Anybody, any clean athlete that tries to mimic the Bulgarian system to the T like they did is going to break half their body and make absolutely no um, gains. I mean, it'll take you far. But I, I'm, I mean, I'm, like I'm to be... the to the you know to the exact point, Bulgarians did it back. And what the Bulgarians did is they got so freaky strong and they won world championships and broke world records. Well, let me tell you something. There's no way you can train like that and become that good without help. Yeah. And I, I have a few examples, I mean, that there's been a few people over here that have tried that, and it was kind of back in the day with, I mean, I, I, you can make gains, but for the, for the if you try to mimic it to the T, no way. No, like, no I'll, way. I'll be explaining a lot of things in detail and breaking down what's going on and showing you how to take from that type of training and combine yeah. it with certain other types of training to actually yeah. get out of the comfort zone and to improve. Yeah. Um, but there's yeah, a fine line. That type of training, there's no secret. No. There is. Uh, it will take you far. Yes, 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 yes. But there comes a point where you have to start having a little bit more of imagination if you're going to get better drug-free. Well, yeah, and that's what I like about Glenn is that when I, I, I feel that our training program, sometimes it, it, it gets – it changes, and we'll get we'll get into some funky stuff. But the majority of our training, I call it very Bulgarian-ish. Mm-hmm. We stick very close to snatch, clean, and jerk, and squat. And some months, we're very Bulgarian. All we do is snatch, clean, and jerk max. And right now, we're doing hangs. We're doing some triples, and we'll get funky and do some pauses. We'll start to veer away, even though we still stick close to the snatch, clean, and jerk. But we'll really start to veer, veer, veer away from that Bulgarian training. But... I call it, even when we are snatching, clean, and jerking, max every day, that's Bulgarian-ish, see, because we're still not on the Bulgarian program because it's suicide clean. Bulgarian program is snatch, clean, and jerk like six times a day, maxing out with squatting maxing out. Nobody's doing that, not even us. We would die. That's why I call it Bulgarian-ish with the S-H on the end. We're we're trying to mimic it as close as we can as clean athletes, but that's what I love about Glenn is he gets you right to that fine line of really just kind of breaking down as a clean athlete, and then the training session's over, and then the next day we push it all the way to that fine line, you know, like a car getting into red. And I think Glenn is great at pushing it to the max without going over. You got to know how to push it to the max. You yes. got to know how to go in there and lift as heavy as you can, go through that adaptation, but yeah. you can't fall into the hole. No. You can't fall to the point where you can't lift at all because you're so busted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got and that takes years of training. Yeah, yeah. How you, you that does not come overnight. That yeah. does not come in a year. That takes a dedicated amount of time to figuring out how you are responding to what you are doing. Yeah. And then you take the things that have worked and you have seen that have worked over years of struggle and you capitalize more off of that. And let me tell you something. It's extremely hard to go over that line mm-hmm. and to overtrain. Because, yes, overtraining does exist, even though I say there's no such thing as overtraining. But it's kind of like the what foot do I jerk with and the traps, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Or the double knee bend. It's, yes, it exists, but there's no need to ever worry about it or talk about it, in my personal opinion, because it automatically, you know, you know, happens. But, you know, look, we train extremely hard. 
and we're not even overtraining. So when I get asked by a lot of beginners and guys that are training like three days a week or four that are worried about overtraining, they're so far away from overtraining. You know, I, I don't even think they could if they tried. I mean, we there's days where I don't think we could if we could try. We would really have to be in this gym like four or five more hours than we already are. Uh, to overtrain. So that's why I just tell beginners and people that are starting out, even people that are above beginners, don't worry about overtraining. Just like don't worry about fo- what foot you step with. Training hard. Because it's not going to happen unless you're dedicating, if you don't have a job and you're sleeping in the gym and you're training all day, every day, then yeah, you might be overtraining. But you should never, ever, ever, ever have to worry about it because you're probably never going to get to that point. It's so hard to get to that point. Yeah. But it, well, I, oh, I train five days a week this week. I feel like I'm overtraining. Are you kidding? Well, I did uh, did a double day on Wednesday. I think I might be overtraining. Are you kidding? You would have to do four double days or four training sessions every day, six days a week, to maybe even get close to overtraining. So stop, stop with that question. You know, training hard is great, but I gotta take a pee real quick. To me, that means absolutely nothing. Are you training heavy? You know, that means more to me. I mean, Tony, am I rambling or do I have to? You you, you can go in there in the gym, and are you leaving? I gotta go number one. Are you really gonna go pee? I got right here. You're gonna leave me alone. Talk to him. <laughs> hey, hey, the attitude nation doesn't bite. I don't know what to say without you though. Come on, right here. Look, they can hear me. Um <laughs> I'm going right now. Oh, training hard uh it's great, but I mean are you going heavy? Because that's that's what you have to adapt to, you know. You gotta put that weight in the bar and get stronger. Uh, He's, uh... You got a caller? I don't know. Do we got a caller? No, we were good. I think it's just you and me, man. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I want to talk to you about something. So, yeah, I mean, training hard is great, but is there a weight in the bar? Are you training heavy? And, you know, it's you got to improve the weaknesses, and you got to keep doing what enables you to lift more weight. You know, all that matters at the end of it is who lifted more that yeah. day. You know, I mean, are you picking the exercises that are making you lift more weight consistently? Or are you doing a bunch of trash that is just trash kicking your ass? Trash is kicking your ass. Tearing you up, you know. I mean, what are you trying to do? You're trying to, are hmm. you trying to be the most conditioned weightlifter or Ooh. are you trying to be the weightlifter that wins? Oh! <laughs> I mean, it's like an archer, you know. Mm. Are you going to be the archer that goes out there and shoots 10 quality arrows in the bullseye? Or are you going to be the archer who shoots 100 shit arrows? You know what I mean? Are oh, you my gonna, God. Are, are you, you people listening to this? Like, honestly. Are you going to be the weightlifter who goes in the gym and lifts one or two really, really heavy weights? Or are you going to be the weightlifter who goes in the gym and lifts a bunch of shit lightweights and he's getting good and conditioned with lightweights? Oh. Okay. If that's what you think is going to win... But when you're looking up at me and my gold medal, and I shake your hand, oh. you go back to that type of training again. Oh, you know. Oh my gosh! Whatever allows you to put more weight on that bar, that's what your body will adapt to. And I give you a little. I'm gonna give. I want to talk about. John's been seeing me in training a lot. Are people getting this for free? And he knows what I'm. He knows what I'm gearing up for. We should charge for this. I've been talking to John about what I'm gearing up for. I've got it exactly in my head, exactly what I want, and this can be. It's going to be something special. But I've been starting to do a lot of block training. Yeah. Because I really believe that is a way to lift more. How strong did we get doing that? We got so strong. That's, uh, and you know. I mean, it's great to go in there and pop out a triple in the front squat with 220. Well, let me tell you something. But you know what's even better? Yeah. Putting that 220 in a high block and getting. Let me tell you something. I might have taken bronze at nationals this year, but go on the ranking board right now. Go to USA Weightlifting and look on the rankings. I'm the number one ranked weightlifter in the country in the 94 kilo class. I'm still the champ. Okay. So, and you know why? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna put on my ego shirt real quick. And this is uh, it backs Donnie up with this. That was a huge 350 total 352, mm-hmm. 353 at a, uh, the PWA Championships in San Francisco. And leading up to that meet, where I went 161.92. You snatched 166 <laughs> yeah, in yeah. training. That broke the but, American record, and you cleaned the American yeah. record off the block. But at that meet in San Francisco, why I'm still ranked number one in the country um, is because, what, we were doing block training, what, two months? 
I don't want to give too much away because that's too much secret. Ah, uh, okay, all right. I'll say block training, but I'll take my ego shirt off. But I was just backing you up that yes, I I agree with you. That's what the show's about, you know. I'm gonna give you a little bit, but yeah. you still gotta go get it. Yeah. You know I, mean? I I just your speech before I started talking was fantastic. That's the best speech you've ever had in your whole entire life. And it's just um, it's so great that we're doing the show because people get to hear that shit. Because I used to hear that stuff over a cold beer in a dark corner, and now people get to tune in and listen. If we don't, if, if there's not twenty thousand people listening to the show right now, then they're missing out. That's their fault. Develop a relationship with the snatch and clean jerk that is going to be a you hate the bar relationship. Spit on that thing. You're not going to like it. And after years of pulling that ball off that floor. Hitting it and catching it, and your body is adapting to it. You know, a body that that, that snatches 70 kilos is going to look different from a body that snatches 160 kilos. And once you get to a point where you are starting to plateau, and the comfort zone is there, you've got to be a little bit more imaginative. You've got to find ways that enable you to put more weight on the bar and attempt heavier attempts. You can't keep going back to what you did before. You've got to break. You've got to go in search of how to get better. Uh, and if your coach doesn't know it or if your teammates don't know it, then you have to take Like I said, you can't depend on anybody else. You have to go and search for it yourself or sit down with yourself and your L-boy and think about what you're doing. You know? Are you trying to just post a decent total or are you trying to be the best there's ever been? You know? I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, there's there's a... Uh, you know, you know, both John and I have great blogs. We both teach seminars, and we're starting to to give a little bit of our advice to people. You know, day long sessions where we're, we're telling people what what we've learned. You know, and yeah, um, and, and my seminar it is in the making right now, possibly going to a two day because I, I'm having trouble fitting all my all my coaching, my ideas, my approaches, my philosophy. And, and then and the maxing out, the training portion, and the technique all together in one day. I have so much shit to say. It's unbelievable. That's why I'm so glad we're doing this show is that yeah. uh, we could have a seven-hour show and we would not have five seconds of down air. Yeah. We could just talk, 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 weightlifting for seven hours straight, and we could come back the next day and do it again. And I just wish that when I started out in the sport, I had a weightlifting talk Donnie Shankle to listen to. You know what I mean? And and um, how do we get on this topic? I don't know, but put Ferris on pink pills. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know, put Sarah Rebels, Robles, which oh, she's so cool. She's really nice. She's a nice girl. I like she? Sarah. She's a sweetheart. We got such great athletes in this country. We had a slumber last year at the games. We had a slumber party. A slumber party. Where we all like told stories slumber? and were messing around. Yeah, and we had like we were playing this game and. Hillary Katzenmeyer was there. Oh, she's and she's I call fancy. Hillary. I call Hillary. Uh, yeah. What do I call her? I call her. What's that? That fairy from Disney. Oh, Twink. Uh, I call her Tinkerbell. Tinker, but she looks just she like, looks like it. Tinkerbell. God, she's a, she's a little Spitfire. She is. A I love our weightlifters. I love our athletes. Our yeah, USA athletes I, are fantastic. I, I, that's why I always, when people bring that 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 trash up about why get that trash them, out. Are you kidding me? We got some of the best talent there is. The, best. the hardest working there. I tell you what, right now, put Ferris on pink pills. We will run laps around those cats who. I don't, man. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you yeah. really kidding me? Gosh. Are you kidding me? I know. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 30, right. 30 kilos. I, I don't even get on YouTube 30 anymore. kilos each comments. lift. So you take the numbers that you see on the scoreboards yeah. now for us, and you add six kilos. Now, look, I dropped out of math in school, but are you ki- You can't see the Are math? you kidding me? You can't do the... Are you serious? Are there people out there that... Fucking... I've already proven it. Ugh. I beat that one guy. When you're going, when you go, go to an international meet like me and Donnie have done, and sit next to another country, a girl, and she's got a mustache. Yeah, her hands look like Michael Jordan. She, they got hair on their hands. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? Acne down to your wrist? Are you kidding me? Don't know. I don't, don't want to go there. I don't want to go there, dude. <laughs> you know, because we're just gonna piss people off. All right, we're yeah. You, you know, know what we is, already I, did I, the low bar. Is, that's here it is. Right. <laughs> Why do I like that so much? You know? Are you kidding me? Uh, this has been a fantastic show. Uh, this has been our best show. I'm going to put this on my blog. 
I don't you know, know who we're going to piss off next, the Peta people? I don't know. Man. Well, we, we we got the uh, low bar back squat people really upset. Now, this might be uh, – we might have started a, a, a shit storm here. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? You know, maybe – or maybe just people agree with us and say, okay, move on to the next subject. But who knows? Maybe we'll be on a bunch of forums. And you know, there's still going to be that old crew. You know, hey, look, if you hate John North, just join the club. There's still going to be that old crew, or or it's, it's going to be either the old crew or the crew that's, uh, that doesn't know a, a damn thing. Yeah. And there's all, oh, well, they don't know what they're talking. We have, we could be yeah. working harder, and we got yeah. better coaches. Pat Mendez that. snatched yeah. 207 in training because yeah. he had great technique. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> It's no, it's no, no it's, secret, no, people. It's not, it's not, it's they will admit it. And they will admit it. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, would be uh, the few Bulgarian. I met a few Bulgarians that uh, they laugh. They, they, they laugh at us. Stupid. They laugh at Why us. Why would you yeah, do yeah. this? They laugh. Go live us. the American dream. Yeah. If you're not going to be world champion. Yeah, man. And do what it takes to be world champion. Yeah. So what do you do at the end of the day? Oh, all, you do, all you can do is be the number one in this country. Yeah, I gotta keep training. If you're number one in this country, then maybe you can relate. Well, you that get spots. Go to the Olympics. Go to the world championship. Why do we only get one spot? Are you kidding me? I don't get that either, though. I feel like we've done me? pretty good the last four years. If you're competing so against... Yeah, I don't get it. I, don't, I just I don't, don't understand. I don't know if I should go down the road. But I don't understand, though, how we got one spot. I felt like... Uh, Everybody could have done a little bit better as, as the men's team. Everybody could have done a little bit better. Yeah, we yeah. could have had less bombs. So we could have totaled better. But the playing field wasn't yeah. level. The yeah. playing field wasn't level. Look, I understand we're not getting an eight-man team or an eight-woman team, but one and then two women... Well, I don't understand what well, we're wrong. They cheat man. and we we suffer the consequences. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Bullshit. Shit. Cheaters is what they are. Cheaters. That's what it's coming to. We abide by the rules. Yeah. And get one. Yeah. And the thing, look, we have athletes that actually try. Okay, I'm not going to name names, but a few guys that got popped a few months I don't ago. Give a shit what they're doing anyway. I go out there and the we actually we actually tried and look, we get popped. You can't do it. It's impossible. For all that you think that are going to try, it's impossible. Just quit. Don't don't even try to do it because it's impossible. We have USADA. USADA's probably here right now waiting for us. Oh, we are. Well, we got Russian guys out there at the age of 17 going nuts. It is, it is what it is. You know, I don't care what they're doing. At the end of the this, this could have been – I don't even know why we're still talking about it, to why be honest, because this could have been a five-second answer. We should have just said steroids and moved on. Steroids, done. Move on, done. Move on, done. There's, there's no need to talk about it. What do you want to talk about? Let me talk about some movies real quick. Uh, a, few, a few I've seen. Last time I went on and on about uh, uh, <laughs> We Bought a Zoo. I know. That was a great movie. Um, I, I said last show Machine Gun, or no, Machine Gun Preacher was fantastic. Gerard Butler. Have you seen that yet, Donnie? It's, about, it's a true story. Great movie. Holy crap. You want to talk about an Attitude Nation soldier, a bad, a bamf, badass. Holy moly. Well, now that Dark Rack Rises has been over, what are you what are you excited to see now? Um, that's coming out. That that That's not out yet. None. You did, did you see, when you watched The Dark Knight, did you see the Superman trees? No, I didn't, actually. You asked, I, I don't know why. I didn't play. The girls are going to love this guy. Really? Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Henry Cavill guy, the girls are going to love him. You know, I saw a movie the other night. That shocked me. We're at Red Box, me and my wife, and because they don't have a blockbuster anymore, which is too bad. You know, look, blockbuster and Hollywood video and all that's obviously more expensive. But guess what? Luxury tax. I don't care. I love blockbuster. I like the smell. I like the comfort of it. I like to walk around and look at old movies and new movies and smell the popcorn and talk to people. I love blockbuster. So now we have to go to this red box. We've seen everything in there. And then I saw this movie that we haven't seen that I like a few of the actors. Actually, the, the main actor is the guy that played Robin Hood in Batman Rises, the new one. Robin Hood. Or, Robin. I, uh, like, Robin. Like the Prince of Thieves. Robin. Robin. <laughs> and I said, screw it. We'll rent it. We watched it. It's called 50-50. 50-50. It's a cancer movie. Mm -hmm. So for those who haven't seen 50-50, it's half comedy but half very – like, you know, dramatic, emotional. It's got a good blend of both. The director did real good on, on bringing both sides to it. It's a great movie. That's that's just the only one that comes to my mind right now is 50-50. It was a good movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I recommend it. But uh, I don't know. There's nothing out really. I just, I, I've been disappointed lately in movies. Uh, you know, I mean, the Batman movie was good. Uh, I don't know. 
you know, it's hard to get me to go to the movie theater. Um, I'm only going to go to the movie theater if I really want to see a movie. Like Batman Rises. Yeah. I saw in theaters. Yeah. But most... Did you see it IMAX? No, I wanted to. I saw an IMAX. Oh, gosh. Dude, I had to be peeled off the chair. Were, the you, were you standing up and going crazy? There was this guy to the left of Adam and me when we went to go see it. He yeah. was holding eight chairs. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> this was hilarious. Why? For, How cool is this to do yeah. your buddy, you know? In the center of a theater. Yeah. And the perfect seats. Yeah. You're going to leave your, your, your scrawniest friend to hold eight seats they were throwing crap at this guy were they uh, people were coming like somebody sitting there oh i'm holding these he was holding eight he was sitting in one and holding eight, eight more that, he had his arms spread out here's the, oh my god uh, I, there are a lot of about a lot of things about this situation was funny but <laughs> people just started to take over you know? they? they just started to sit uh, then his friends come back as the movie was already started, idiots. You leave him there. I can't stand people to do that for a half hour to, to guard eight chairs for yeah. the Dark Knight Rises and IMAX, and you don't think people are going to get fed up and just sit? Yeah. And then his friends start bitching at him, like, yeah. "Why did you lose our seats? The guy was 120 pounds." Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bunch of banes in there. Bane. Do the voice again for people that joined in halfway. Oh man. Which one? Donnie Shankle in the beginning of the show was doing the uh, Bane voice. Which one of the best quotes? Oh, my gosh. Buckle your seatbelts for this, people. Yes. The fire rises. You know what I mean? Do it again. Get closer uh, to the mic and do it again. Uh, blood will be shed. The city belongs to you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so awesome. Gosh, that's oh, awesome. man. That just made we the whole show. We should just do a show yeah. where I'm doing Bane voice. You practice your Batman. You do the Batman voice. We'll just do the whole show like that. I can't figure out where the bad guys are. Yeah, don't spit mine next time. But I'm that was gonna, bad. Going can we it. can we reverse? Can next we... week's show, we're going to have a round table. Round table with the whole Muscle Driver team. The whole team is going to be here. Glenn and all the athletes. I don't think that is going to be exciting. We'll have Travis Cooper. That might be better than The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Tra Travis Cooper is joining the team in a few days. I would. Maybe we should go pay-per-view on this one. We got a few 77s no, coming down. No, because we're nice guys. We're nice guys. Can we can we rewind real quick? We're givers. We're givers. When you said that you wanted Tom to die, <laughs> we, we never really touched base on that and ended that well. well at the end uh, of training, I want everybody to die. Well, you have uh, – you really do. You when get I'm crazy. Training, do, hey, look, the daily video for yesterday, the, the Team, MD, Team MD USA video should be out today. Uh, it was yesterday's training. Me and Donnie went eight crap. Went crazy. We went psychotic. It typically happens on a Wednesday yeah. for some reason. Check that video. I'm going to put that video and this show back up on my blog today. Um, but check that video out. Me and Donnie went nuts. I uh, snatched 150 for a double, double like nothing. and the high hang. So that's above the knee. And above I, the knee. I was on fire. Man, you One, good. 182 clean and jerk. Pull and then clean and jerk. High pull, clean and jerk, 182. And oh man, I went after 185 a few times. But you know what I'm doing though, and what me and you are doing is we're letting these rookies know uh, who's boss. Yeah, okay, I gotta get nuts. But sometimes yeah. I gotta just, I just gotta. I mean, it doesn't have, I don't have to turn the way. It's all been the time. too quiet. But it's been too quiet. We had to let it go. I feel like we let off a lot of steam. I left a window open for who? Yeah. Caleb. You yeah, know, I hit 190 and stopped. He puts on 191 a minute. You ain't gotta capitalize then. Mm. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's a rude awakening for them. For and you sure. think you think I'm done at that? Get man, oh, holy moly! You're getting jacked up. I'm like punching a kid. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to, for sure. No, we we went nuts yesterday because I feel like we had to get it out. Sometimes you got to get it out. You got to get the demon out. It's like drinking Keystone Light. If you're throwing up after Keystone Light, you got to get the demon out. Get that demon out. That's a that's an inside story between me and Donnie. Get that demon fantastic. out. Fantastic. Get the demon out. And you got to lose your mind sometimes, people. I mean, you really do. It's been quiet muscle driver lately. These new guys on the team, man, they're thinking about technique and they're thinking about percentages and how i got to stay on my heels and all this bullshit. Get the hell out of here. Put yourself in the face and pull the bar. That's <laughs> Yes. Oh gosh, if I gotta if I gotta sit down, and look at one more video, or hear one more person say, "Oh, you can do that," but shut up. Yeah. Punch yourself in the gonads and walk up to the bar and pull the thing like a 
Bam! Man. Are you people hearing this? You gotta get out of the bar! We gotta put you this gotta on. Catch it. We gotta put this on pay per view from now on. I got it! Got it! <laughs> this town needs an enemy! <laughs> oh, wow. You got such a good dog. But anyway, look, tune in the next week's show. 17 seconds. Tune in the next week's show. We're gonna have a round table with the whole team. It should be fascinating. If anything, we'll. Attitude Nation salute, the Dark Orchestra, John John.blogspot.com. God bless you. God bless you. Attitude Nation salute. Slam bars, drink coffee.